Thank you, Bettina. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Also, uh, I think on my behalf, but also the whole team, and as you can see, the team is larger than last time. Uh, Michael and I are still the same, but we're very pleased and honored to be joined now by uh, Christina Johansson, our new CFO, who I'm sure you've read about, uh, but many of you probably haven't yet met, and you know, this is a chance not only during the presentation, but of course, obviously afterwards. Uh, and then also Duncan. Uh, Duncan, a lot of you met, I think, uh, last year in June when we had the uh, Capital Market Day here at, in Frankfurt at the uh, Trade Fair. Uh, he'll explain a bit more about himself, but uh, we're also very proud now that by having added another member and by also us having added another year to our experience curve, we now have over 100 years of competence in the industry. So I think uh, a good team. Um, not only 100 years of competence, but 100 years of experience. Uh, we've been through a lot of what we have ahead of us, and I think that makes us really well prepared for the, the future. It's my pleasure to walk you through the headlines, and then, of course, Christina is going to uh, dive into the details. Uh, but I think our single biggest headline of 2018, um, you know, and I know the financial community may look at it differently, but for us it was definitely uh, the fact that we completed our DPA, or to be more exact, our extended DPA. So you will have read uh, when we proudly announced early December that the monitor had certified us. And you know, what does the monitor certify? He certifies that the, the company is on an irreversible course to self-sustaining compliance. Doesn't say we're perfect, but he says we've got systems in place that we're enabled to deal with compliance ourselves. And you know, why do I say that? Because you know, compliance is a journey that really never ends. Uh, it's like health and safety. You know, the day you say, okay, we're there, that's the day you have your accidents or your incidents. And, and that's why for us, compliance has become part of the culture of Billfinger. And I think it's, um, you know, not only the culture, but it also has given us self-confidence. You know, some years ago, people doubted whether we could make it. Uh, we've shown we can. Uh, we made it by ourselves. Yes, we had some outside help. Uh, we had a lot of guidance from uh, Dr. Lifchitz. But in the end, you know, it was our team that uh, took us there. And you know, our team was led by Olaf Schneider. Olaf, raise your hand again. There he is, okay, our chief legal counsel. Uh, for those of you that want to learn more about compliance later on, he's the go-to guy. Um, it also means, of course, that uh, with our systems now in place and our newfound confidence, you know, we feel prepared to go back into places that we left before. Uh, one of those is China. Uh, you will have read about uh, our intents on China that you know, we're establishing an office in uh, Guangzhou to support our uh, biotech market. Uh, you know, biopharma units uh, are selling into China, and as we sell more, we need to support those sales. You've also read about scrubbers, which we'll go into a little bit more later. You know, scrubbers are the, the catalysator, the uh, you know, cleaning mechanisms used in the marine environment to clean up their environmental act, and a lot of those will be installed on ships in Chinese dry docks. Yeah? Now, we wouldn't have trusted ourselves to do that some years ago, but now, of course, with compliance in hand, our newfound confidence and systems, uh, we feel ready to do that and ready to go east again. Of course, the uh, financial highlights, uh, again, no surprise, you saw the numbers this morning. Um, very pleasing, I would say, uh, but I use the word pleasing, not yet satisfied. You know, we have a way to go. We're roughly at the uh, halfway mark on our 2020 uh, strategy that, in fact, we unveiled uh, two years ago to the day, February 14th, 2017. We came out with our strategy, and uh, as you'll see as we go through this, we really haven't changed our aspirations or our own expectations. But for 2018, um, the highlights, of course, you know, orders received. Uh, we beat our own uh, expectations. You recall the outlook there in the middle of the page, uh, mid-single digit. Um, we topped at actually 12.5 if we go to the decimal. So that's why we give ourselves two green check marks there. Revenue um, also grew. You recall in our 2020 strategy, our um, CAGR for the, the whole period was 5% uh, CAGR. Uh, we did 6% organic growth in 2018. So again, we give ourselves uh, one check mark. Uh, EBITDA adjusted. Uh, you know, we kept it uh, in the, as we say here, significant increase, uh, mid to higher double digit million amount. And then in Q3, at the end of Q3 rather, we became a little bit more precise and said it's going to be in the range of 50 to 75, and you know, we're right bang in the middle of that with our 65, another check mark. 
the final uh, box was uh, free cash flow adjusted. And our target at the beginning of the year was to get to a break even. So if we'd seen a, a four, five, six there, we would have been happy. Um, we see a five and a six, 56. So I think we did well. And it wasn't just by you know, not paying people. We did well in uh, efficiency, in driving our collections, reducing DSO. And uh, Christina will show you more details on that. So I think overall, it was a, uh, a year where we were able to achieve our expectations. Uh, we're able to check the boxes, not only the large ones here, but also a lot of the small ones along the way, and make good progress. If I drop down a level now into um, you know, Q4 performance and how that translates going forward, um, I think some of you didn't expect that we would do as well in Q4 on orders received. Uh, to be honest, neither do we. Um, you recall at the outset of the year, we expected Hinkley Point to feature in our order intake in 2018. That was shifted into 2019. So then we were also holding our breath a little bit. And you know, the fact is that both Q3 and Q4 in 2017 were very strong quarters. So when we were able to show that in this year, or rather you know, the end of last year, Q4 2018, we had an organic increase of 3% over the relatively strong quarter in the year before, we were very pleased with uh, our sales team. And I think it shows that you know, our strategy, our focus on the industries, but also our investments into business development is really beginning to uh, pay off. On the revenue side, uh, it translates into revenue um, with some time delay. Obviously, you know, we take in long-term service contracts, we take in projects, and of course, for that to filter through to revenue does take a while. But with a book-to-bill ratio of 1.07 on the year, uh, you know, we're confident that not only uh, does that fuel our revenue growth for 2018, but it puts us in a very good position for 2019. Uh, when you look at our backlog uh, organic increase of 12% at year-end 18, again, it gives us confidence, and therefore, you know, we continue our momentum. Uh, you know, we're not going to go crazy and accelerate out of control. We're going to continue at our pace and deliver on what we said we would deliver. The adjusted uh, EBITDA, uh, significant increase. Okay, that's not difficult because you recall in 2017 we were at three million. Uh, you recall why. Um, you know, we have our project uh, management uh, to 99% under control. Uh, you never have it completely under control, so we don't dare say 100. But we've installed the system to make sure that we deliver our projects uh, as predicted. And uh, therefore, the pickup in EBITDA is, uh, to a large extent, a result of not having those kind of mistakes and actually delivering what we said we would do. And once again, in Q4, it was our strongest quarter. Uh, not quite, uh, EBITDA adjusted as high as the prior year, but the prior year had some adjustments. So when we look kind of beneath the effects, uh, it was a good quarter and we were pleased, but also not yet satisfied. The finally net profit, um, I think the, uh, the fourth quarter net profit adjusted was the first time that we actually uh, got through the, uh, the zero line since 2014. Uh, but for the year, still negative on the net profit unadjusted line. Um, you know, we think we're on the way to that, and of course, we've also significantly improved over what we did in 2017. Moving on to uh, liquidity, and as already mentioned, you know, our cash flow improved significantly, um, 56 million for adjusted free cash flow. A um, you know, large part of that uh, was, you know, the, the fourth quarter performance as in many other previous years, the fourth quarter is outstanding. We always hold our breath between uh, you know, Christmas and New Year, and I think all of us were looking at our um, you know, emails daily to get the cash report, and then when it came in, it was really, you know, Happy New Year, we're on the way. Um, Christina will show you more details, but as I mentioned, you know, 14 days of DSO improvement went a long way to driving that number. Our balance sheet remains uh, relatively solid. Um, you know, it's performing again as expected. Uh, we concluded our share buyback uh, last year. That was 150 million, which uh, ran out in October, again as planned. Uh, we've also, on the basis of the, the numbers you've seen and on the basis of our balance sheet, uh, we've proposed to the um, supervisory board uh, one euro. Um, they will propose that to the uh, AGM uh, to be held on the 8th of May in Mannheim. 
and that would then be the third year uh, in a row that we've paid you know, the one euro kind of basis. Uh, going forward, of course, uh, we expect to do better than that. But uh, I think, again, it reflects the fact that we have confidence in our balance sheet, we have confidence in our planning, and that we return some of the money, especially some money that we took in in late 2016 with the sale of uh, Apleona, we return that back to the shareholders. Our outlook for 2019, um, as I said a few times in the meantime, is fueled by the, uh, the strong order book. It's fueled by the, uh, the progress on our strategy and our improved operating performance and more of that later. But in a single number, you know, we expect to have a, uh, a baseline, if you like. We expect to do better than 100 million uh, adjusted EBITDA in 2019. And with that, um, you know, I would pause and ask Christina to get into the details on the numbers. <laughs> 